These are evil geniuses. EG for short, Team Evil Geniuses is one of the most elite pro-gaming organizations on the planet. And at the top of their StarCraft II roster is EG Jadong. Though now known for his StarCraft II dominance, Jadong was originally known as one half of the greatest rivalry in the history of the game's predecessor, StarCraft Brood War. At the time, he was known simply as the Tyrant. Sakuma will clean up that army! South Korea, a country with a rich tradition of both hard work and cutting-edge applied technology. Nowhere else is this cultural combination better displayed than in the country's de facto national sport, a competition played with extreme determination and a mouse and keyboard. StarCraft. Korea really took to StarCraft. Broadband here was subsidized very early on, and these things called PC bongs popped up, which are just rooms full of computers where you go and you pay maybe a dollar or so, and you can play for a whole hour on the internet. At the same time, StarCraft came out, and it kind of uh, caught the Korean imagination. There's something about real-time strategy that's different than every other game. You have to think so fast, you have to react so fast. Your physical ability to be able to do things at a certain speed, it's like you're playing an athletic event. There was these giant tournaments where, you know, they were taking out entire arenas in the early 2000s for people to watch Brood War, to people to watch these games between, you know, Boxer and Yellow and I Love OOV and Gurr and all these guys. Boxer, Nada, and Yellow became these idols. The girls have posters of them in their room and they think that they're the sexiest thing because they can move their fingers really quickly. For the first time ever, pro gamers had become pop stars. These elite players were simultaneously honored by the public and feared by their colleagues for their otherworldly prowess. But one of the few who did not seem to fear them was a relatively new player, a 15-year-old by the name Lee J. Dong. J. Dong chose to play as the Zerg, a bug-like alien race and one of three playable races in StarCraft. Each race had different strengths and utilized different tactics which played to those strengths. The Terrans are like these redneck, scrappy humans. What you got for me out there, Joey Ray? A lot of guns, tanks and whatnot. A lot of machinery, a lot of like concepts you're kind of familiar with. There's Protoss, who are kind of the, almost the alien race, like the higher being kind of race. They're very futuristic, they warp things in and have kind of psionic abilities and whatnot. The Zerg are the bugs. Not really that easy for a new player to get into, but very fun uh, for someone that's much better. For Jadong, the vicious and agile Zerg proved to be a match for his style of play. In a word, fast. If he 
In six months, Jadong won a staggering four tournament finals. Before the end of 2007, he would be known as the Tyrant. On his way to his second championship run at the MSL Season 4, Jadong dispatched a young up-and-coming Terran player, three games to one. It was only the second time Jadong had played Lee Young-ho, but it would not be the last. The gaming world would soon come to know him as Flash. Though initially considered a gimmicky player, the 14-year-old didn't take long to make a name for himself. The same year Jay Dong won Kespa's Player of the Year award, Flash took home Rookie of the Year. Flash is like what a lot of people would call a robot. He practices for 12 hours a day, not because he has to, but because he likes to. He wants to be the best, and as a result, he just puts in all that work. The next time they played, Flash demonstrated how much he had learned about Jadong, defeating him two games to one with a massive mech army and winning his first tournament championship. Three days later, Flash would again defeat J Dong 2 to 1 at the GOM TV Star Invitational. You know, everything that he does is so meticulous and thought out and his build orders and strategies. Flash is so exacting in his play that he actually brings a ruler with him. His keyboard has to be a certain distance from his monitor. His mouse has to be in the right place, his mouse cord, his seat. He makes sure that everything is exactly how he always trains. The meticulous Terran player's quest for perfection soon garnered him a nickname even more towering than Jadong's. Kusu. Cut. You know, it's almost a joke in StarCraft about how he is God. He completely understood StarCraft 1 and all that was left for him was to execute what he knew. Jadong is kind of the same way. He's very, you know, he's a very talented guy and he'll, he'll practice his builds out the same kind of way. But it's a, definitely a little bit more of, you know, on the fly kind of execution of it. He 
he's got that fire he's got this this ability to just like get mad and if he has this murder face when he's playing against someone who he thinks has disrespected him he was labeled the tyrant he came out with all these great counters to terran play and he didn't like the fact that he was being contested as the best player in the world he wanted to be the tyrant of everything and then this guy comes out that they're calling god because he's so good he was like no you know i'm gonna do something that doesn't make sense and it's gonna beat you anyway Gino just has too many mutilists there it is the game Flash is back in this. And another good game! It felt at many times like Jadon was the only Zerg who ever could be Flash. And it felt many times like Flash was the only Terran who ever could be Jadon. It's the best Terran ever against the best Zerg ever. It was phenomenal. After three years of fighting, they had fought 49 games against one another. 24 won by Jadong, 25 won by Flash. Really, they have a, an almost even record against each other. Statistically, as little as makes no matter. But the thing that really sets Flash apart from Jadong is, in a game that's so mechanically demanding and difficult, Flash just completely is inside the game. I don't think that anyone will argue that Jadong was better than Flash, but Jadong, without a doubt, was the second best player, and he was one of the only people that could take out Flash. He's very calm, down to earth. A public relations official could not ask for a better interviewee because he will give the most non-committal, neutral answers that you can possibly ask for. Whereas Jadong is a little bit more emotional. I love you, America! Jadon! He'll do all this fun stuff because he's Jadon. He's the emotional counterpart to Flash's mechanical perfection. While the rivalry between Jadong and Flash was still raging, Blizzard released a sequel to Brood War. It's about time. StarCraft II brought fresh graphics, strategies, and a dedicated crop of new competitors, one of whom had been a Brood War washout, a phenomenal Protoss player named Hero. <laughs> Starcraft 
그거를 부모님께서 알고 계셔서 스타크래프트 원을 그만두면서 다시는 게임을 다시는 e스포츠 쪽에 가지 마라 게임을 하지 마라 이렇게 했었는데 결국에는 또 저희 아버지는 좀 엄격하시기 때문에 아버지한테 말 안하고 엄마랑 이제 형한테만 말하, 말해서 아빠 몰래 대학교 휴학하고 이렇게 스타트 팀에 들어가고 그랬었어요 Hero was recruited by a team based out of the Netherlands. Long-time rivals to Team Evil Geniuses, Hero's new home had deep roots in the StarCraft community. Team Liquid started with Nazgul as a place where people could go and talk about Brood War, and Brood War was still so small in North America, it was just being casually played, and you know, most people weren't aware that there was this whole Korean culture based around this game. It was a place to go to get knowledge and research and talk to fans. The team kind of comes alongside that too. You start seeing the Liquid players at the, at the tournaments and whatnot, and you, you kind of attach yourself to them because you know Team Liquid already. You know the brand of Team Liquid by the time that you see them at the tournament. At that time, I was doing the Ladder 1th, Grandmaster 1th, and I was feeling a lot of confidence. I was always going to go to the I've always said he's one of the best Protoss, well, especially lately, one of the best Protosses in the world. And uh, as soon as he gets past those nerve issues, he's going to be one of the best players. He's so stressed out about all of his matches, he wants to win so badly. And sometimes that makes him lose when he really should win. So, Jimin is a Tongshin Motor. The 2011 DreamHack was, it was, it was huge. The prize pool was huge, the stadium was huge, the production value that DreamHack put in was unlike any other competition we had seen before. Well guys, we're finally here, we're at the final chapter uh, of this story. We're going to find out who's going to be the winner of DreamHack 2011. Liquid Hero! Puma, come on out, show yourself. 개인적으로 이렇게 개인적인 이런 한국에서 같이 지내봤기 때문에 되게 친한 동생인데 그런 애고 게임에서는 게임에서 좀 약사반 애죠. 되게 막. Make some noise for Hero. From the team Evil Geniuses. Give it up for Puma. That rivalry was so strong and so brewing, and it was almost a good versus evil scenario. Even though people that love evil geniuses are going to be like, "We were the good guys." Well, 이 주에 대해서 안 좋은 감정 같은 건 없었는데 그냥 분위기상 이지한테 지면은 뭔가 안될것 같은 그런 느낌을 받았었던 것 같아요. He wants to see what he's going to see up here, and it's four Marines. These heroes. Soccer Micro is absolutely unbelievable. He will back up now, let his shield start to recharge just a little Over bit. Here. Now the, the Glossus does outrange the bunker, which is going to beat the Moreno's forward. He oh, is. but from behind, he's going to take out the pylon. No more Protoss oh, gets worked in over here. That flank right there, Tasteless. That is absolutely huge. Somehow getting those Marauders out, and Heroes in so much trouble. Beautiful Forest Fields. And it looks like Puma will clean up that army. Oh. Landy Mules, he says it's over. Get out and GG. I started to get nervous, but the first game was very nervous. But the end was very nervous. So I got to get that and get a little bit of attention. He may use the sentries to try to force field this area over here. Oh, trapping two marauders. Beautiful force fields by Hero. Really good job. Oh! 
Huge force field. So many SCVs trapped on the inside. What great play. And GG. Just everything falling apart for Puma right now. The bunker completes. It doesn't matter. There's so many Zods here. Liquid Hero just pummeling Puma right now. Targeting down that Nexus a little bit and using the high ground to his advantage. A game where uh, Hero started out so well, it suddenly looks oh, like wow. Puma can be the comeback king. The front door is open. No. These pylons going down one by one. GG. And we are going to a game number seven. Game is not going to be able to do it. So, now, the game is going to be able to do it. I think it's going to be able to do it. I think it's going to be able to do it. So this is a pretty good map to have the finals on. Uh, it can make for a pretty long game. Well, both players have scouted each other reasonably quick. Puma, on the other hand, has some medevacs on the way, and it looks like he wants to get oh. a little bit more aggressive. His ghost finding this expansion. They're ignoring the Nexus, too. He's oh saying, God. no, I think I can kill you now. Very nice there. Uh, is he going to get any force fields up? Is That's, it enough? Oh is it enough? Oh my god, that's a lot. A blink up of the Stalkers. The Immortals dealing huge amounts of damage to these Marauders. It looks like Hero is going to have enough. Hero, so smart, chasing down the Metavax. Now these Stalkers are playing a little mind game here, trying to find where those Metavax are coming. He's trying to head those off. You know that scene in Star Wars? It's a oh. trap. <laughs> Uh, I don't think anyone in here has seen Star Wars taste like I guess not. I don't know. Even though he has that lead, he has to be very careful. Uh -oh. He has to have enough units, and he's going after this base right he's now. He's running. The command center will go down. Hero is just looking invincible. He has more storms saved up now. Oh, my God. And now it's time uh -oh. for humiliation. Oh, and he's I making think we're going to have our winner. He is Gobert and GG! GG! The team members, our team manager Robin, he like came up and he 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 came up. Hero won and he came out of that booth shaking and the whole Team Liquid team ran up to him and you just, your eyes well up and you watch this person that accomplished something that's been a dream of theirs their entire life. It's You kind of play baseball when you're growing up and you know, you're like, oh, someday I'll be you know, the shortstop for the Red Sox. As you kind of get older, you're like, okay, maybe this dream's not gonna happen, but I'm still having a lot of fun playing this. And I think it's the same kind of story too with, with uh, eSports. You fall in love with the game of, of StarCraft II and you're like, man, I'm gonna be on stage at MLG someday, you know, and that'll be me hoisting the cup up. And then the more you play, you're like, okay, maybe, maybe I'm not that good. But at the same token, you can be like, okay, these, these are my idols who I want to be like. Which is a really cool experience when, you, when it comes to playing video games. My blood pressure has probably like gone up ridiculous amounts. If it wasn't for the competition, I probably wouldn't be playing. LGD China is one of the more fundamentally strong teams. They like playing as a team. They like making as little mistakes as possible. When they win, it's unlike anything else. Is it panic time? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's now time for Team Liquid versus LGD Gaming.